pencil and some paper and go with us. We ask and pray. Um, I know probably some of you look at us as your women or your young. All we're here is just to share God's word with you, and we're not here to lift ourselves up, but again, to share God's word and what's found in the gospel. And with that being stated, Michelle, where's our topic going to be? Yes, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. And he's talking about being of the same mind in one accord and that there be no divisions among them. And he says in verse 10, Now I beseech you, brethren, that by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So how can we do this if we have different versions of the Bible mm -hmm. saying different things and saying having different opinions, different denominations, how can we be one mind of one accord? How can we? How can we? Yeah, we can't. No, <laughs> it's not possible. Right, and if we're supposed to be in the body of Christ, right? Uh -huh. There's one body, one spirit, one doctrine of Jesus Christ, and that's of the apostles and, and the prophets with Jesus Christ being the cornerstone according to Ephesians 2.20. Mm -hmm. So if they're preaching a whole bunch of other different things, they cannot be part of the body of Christ because we remember in Colossians, Jesus is the head of the body. Mm -hmm. And if you're preaching something else, Remember, Jesus is the word, right? Amen. They're preaching something else. They're not part of the body because it's bringing divisions in the body. Uh -huh. And he even says here, is Christ divided? In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13, mm -hmm. was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? So there shouldn't be any divisions among us except they be um, reprobates or people coming in to bring in divisions. Amen. Um, on our last program, we gave, we gave different examples of what can, what can cause divisions in the churches. We shared about the revised versions. We shared some people can be in the flesh. And as we're in this 1 Corinthians 1.10, you can go over to 1 Corinthians 3.1 and see another problem that was taking place as people was carnal, having a carnal mind. And if people... And I'm speaking to the church. If the church, so to say, is living according to the carnal mind, which is of the flesh, then this is another reason that the church can have divisions amongst them. And this is why it's very important to take heed, not only to the preaching, but also when to, so to say, making sure we're walking in the spirit. And as Michelle had stated, in, again, in our last messages, talking about, the gifts that God's given us, that Paul stated that it's his desire that we come behind and know gifts, but actually we actually are enriched in, in knowledge and utterance. And by doing this, is, this is what brings out the gifts of God. This is what helps us to flourish in our gifts, which is deposited within us. It's in there. We just have to work on getting it out. And again, there's many things that would try to hinder us from walking in the spirit, and that will try to hinder us with our gifts mm -hmm. and, um, and can cause, again, division, something that was taking place in this first Corinthians. And um, I'll let you share some more of where you want to go with this first Corinthians chapter one. Right. Um, <coughs> well, as far as being of the same mind, like you said, staying in the spirit, but you cannot stay in the spirit if you're, again, reading in another version or a different Bible. And we was going along with sharing on our last program in um, Philippians chapter 3, verse 16, where Paul had told them to be of the same mind mm -hmm. and that they had the same mind, this rule. Amen. Did you want to read that? Yes. Okay. Um, I like verse 15, if you don't mind going okay, there too, go because ahead. This, this topic that we're in today is, is going to go along with our chapter 2. We're going to include chapter 2 in this because it's... Um, they go to, they, they harmonize beautifully, if that makes sense. Paul speaking to those, this wisdom, 
He's speaking to those that are perfect. And these are the people that are mentally and morally mature. They're going to be able to receive this preaching. Those that are immature and those that are wise in their own eyes and those that are know-it-alls or prideful people, they can't receive this type of message. This message is to those that are perfect, okay? Those that have a goal at wanting to be complete in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We may say, yes, we're mentally and morally mature, but we believe that this maturity, maturity, or completeness is a continuing because Paul even tells you this, even in Philippians chapter three, he says, I press for the things, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. He said he, I'll back up to verses, verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Jesus. So my opinion, he's talking about this perfect over here in verse 12 is different than this mentally and morally mature. He is striving to be complete, to reach this completeness. Why? As long as we're in this body, I believe until we go to heaven, we're not going to reach a, 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 a place where we stop growing, if that makes sense. Correct. Paul was urging the people to continue to fight for this completion until we are, so to say, finish growing. And again, till we get home, we will never finish growing because how can we contain everything that is of God? It's according to what God measures out to us. Does that make sense? Amen. It's according to what God measures out to us, but it's based upon the work we're putting into it. Amen. So there's a difference at perfection and there's a difference at my opinion, perfect. We're striving for perfection, so to say, but in one sense we can be perfect now because that shows one who is mentally and morally mature. Amen. Once we reach this mental state of being mentally and morally Per mature, so to say, this is up to us now to walk by the same rule, which keeps us perfectly joined together. Mm -hmm. By staying with this rule, according to this Philippians 3.16, this is what, so to say, again, makes us perfectly joined together in one mind. Amen. But if a person is not, so to say, mentally and morally mature and not constantly working at their maturity, maturity, so to say, then they're going to go back into the flesh or go back into the lust nature and go to back into their old ways called the old man. And believe you me, the old man will try to rise back up. OK, mm -hmm. so we're just stating now let's go back to that Philippians 3, 15 and 16. It says, verse 15, let us therefore as many as be perfect, 50, 46, mentally and morally mature. It says, be thus minded. And if any man be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. This rule, 2583 in your Greek section, this is where you find where it talks about the canon mm -hmm. and the sphere and the boundary. God's word that has been delivered unto us, so to say, through the holy apostles and the prophets, this is that rule, this is that boundary, and this is our sphere to stay in, and it's in our Bible, and this is called the Canon Bible. And our Canon Bible, again, is written by the holy prophets and the holy men, moved by the Holy Ghost, that God has ordained for us, and it's written and found in our King James Bible. And we believe our King James Bible is our canon that we do stick with. And if you go outside of our King James Bible, and start getting into other versions, then you go outside of that boundary line and you're no longer walking by this rule that has been ordained for us to stay with. Mm -hmm. And I'll let you go. And also this rule, like you said, is 2583 in the strength, Greek Strong's Concordance. It's also found in 2 Corinthians 2. Mm -hmm. You'll find it in chapter 10 in verses 13, 15, and 16. Now he says here in verse 13, I like how he says this in verse 13, he says, but we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule, this is the rule, 
It says, which God hath distributed to us. So there was a measure, mm -hmm. a portion of this rule, mm -hmm. of this boundary where they had to stay in. They couldn't go outside this boundary. God set a boundary and they couldn't go outside of it. Amen. And it says, which God hath distributed to us. He distributed to Paul and them and to the apostles to give, he says, a measure to reach even unto you. Amen. So they had to, to give this measure a portion that God had given them to give to everybody else. Amen. And he says, and this measure is talking about a limited portion Amen. or degree. That's right. Amen. And this is this is a really good message and we pray that you guys go with us. And you know, let's go back over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We talked about verse 10. We talked about verse 13 where Michelle had stated um, that verse talking about is Christ divided. And let's go on to see what other problems they were having in the churches. Mm -hmm. Maybe there were some saying, I got baptized by this person. Why I got baptized with this? I got baptized with that. What did, obviously this was an issue because it's found over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Another thing that caused division in this church, mm -hmm. that this household of Chloe, um, them which are of the house of Chloe, they told on them. Mm -hmm. They told them about the contentions that was going on, the quarreling in this church. And Michelle, you want to read verse 14? or? Okay, he says in verse 14, let, let's see. And I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanas. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. And I like this because we have also denominations that want to say, have you been down in Jesus' name? Mm -hmm. Have you been down? Have you been baptized? You know, in Jesus' name. It's all about baptism. Mm -hmm. It's not about being saved. Amen. It's about being baptized. Mm -hmm. That's their salvation. Amen. So he says, I'm glad I didn't baptize none of you. Amen. Except for these few people that I had baptized. He says, I came for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, mm -hmm. lest the cross of Christ should be made none effect. Amen. And let's might as well go to verse 18. It says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. And we believe that the some say it's about the cross, it's about the cross, but people, maybe they don't tell you what the cross actually means. The cross is basically mortifying sin, mortifying flesh, mortifying lust, mortifying carnal mind and everything that goes with it, so to say, because that is the nature of Satan and is of the flesh. And you can, again, never glory in God's presence when sin is active and operative. Mm -hmm. So we believe that the cross includes self-denial, capital punishment, crucifying the flesh, and this is what, so to say, activates the power of God in our lives, so to say. Amen. And he says also in verse 19, he says, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And you'll find that written in Isaiah 29, 14. And so we see here that people in this church were following after other people. And I believe it's because some people, they was probably thinking, oh, he's so wise, he's so this and that. He's, look, I didn't come with preaching with some wisdom of words. Mm -hmm. He says, preaching this is, uh, to the cross is foolishness to them that are perish. He says, where is the wise in verse 20? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world is I like verse 21 for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Mm -hmm. So God made it through his wisdom that the world through their wisdom could not know him. Amen. And it says, and it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. He says for the Jews, they require a sign. The Greeks, they seek after wisdom. 
He says, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, mm -hmm. and unto the Greeks it's foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So we see Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. Amen. And um, you might as well hop down to verse 25. Yes. How do we stop right there? We can't. It says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Amen. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Amen. And this is why he tells us in verse 26 that our calling, see that your calling, brother, not many wise men after the flesh, mighty men or noble men are called. But God chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. The base things of the world, the things which are despised, hath God chosen. Amen. Yea, the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh should glory in the presence of God. Amen. And you know, I, I like Paul's preaching because he didn't lift himself up. No, he didn't. You know, people was talking about being baptized by so-and-so. He says, I thank God I wasn't baptized by none of you, mm -hmm. lest I be saying, or lest you say that I was baptized in the name of Paul. He never lifted himself up. He said that he was the least of all, so to say. He wasn't even, I felt like to a certain extent, he felt like he wasn't even worthy just knowing where he came from and what he did, but he knew that the power of God was upon him because he was saved and he was, so to say, given this gospel to preach unto us. And it wasn't a burden unto him, but it was so powerful in his life because he knew what God is and what God can do and how powerful God's preaching can be. And he was stating this, he wants every person to know God and his power and so to say, and his resurrection power that could be upon you once you get in covenant with Jesus Christ and how powerful God's preaching is. And I like this first verse 26 and 27 because it shows you the little people that God has has called versus the big people that God has not called. And something about the flesh, it appeals to nobility, if that makes sense. Yes. It appeals to famous people. It God. appeals to smart, intelligent people, the wise people. This is what the flesh and the carnal mind, so to say, is drawn to. Mm -hmm. But Paul tells you those that have been called by God, they're the little people, the despised people, the rejected people, so to say, the offscoring of the earth. These are the ones that God has called. These are the ones that can humble themselves themselves, so to say. These are the ones that will get on their knees and forsake all to follow Jesus Christ, to take up their cross, to preach God's word, to see people healed and saved, delivered and set free. That's not ashamed to fast and not ashamed to pray, not ashamed to rise up at the morning hours, not ashamed to rise at the midnight hours. These are the little people, so to say, that are willing to forsake all, to get this knowledge that's found in our Bible and to see the power of God rest upon them. Amen. Okay. And it's so important that we see in the same perspective that Paul's trying to make these people see. He wants you to see in this type of perspective the big people versus the little people. And this is how we can, so to say, um, compare it with what's going on today. Seeing the wise men of this world and seeing how they're on the media and the TV and they're lifting themselves as such great people, but yet they're not fitting the profile of Paul. They're not fitting the profile of Jesus. They're actually fitting the profile of these noble people, these people after the flesh and these mighty people that Paul stating that God hath not chosen nor ordained nor sent. And you notice it's the noble and the wisest people in this world, the rich people mm -hmm. that are the ones that's creating these different version of the Bibles to bring in division in the church, to get people to stop following Jesus Christ and stop following the Bible and start following them. Amen. And if you notice too, and Paul says in Ephesians 3, 8, unto me, Paul says, I am the le less than the least of all saints. Is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ? Mm -hmm. And then you find in Acts chapter four, and verse 13, how now when they saw the boldness of Peter, this is the Pharisees and the so-called the scribes who was very wise in their own conceit. Mm -hmm. It says, when they saw the Peter boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned Amen. and ignorant men, they marveled and they looked, took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Yep. So we see a lot of people here, they can say a lot of big words. Yes. 
and they do that to make themselves supposedly look wise when they are really the most stupid people of all. So. Okay, <laughs> well, well let's share what Paul did not do and what Paul did. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. He says, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech. He didn't come with this great eloquent speaking, mm -hmm. uh, which some people think is really great and is appealing when you're such a great speaker. But he says, or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. He said, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified, so to say. And I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And it tells you another thing about him. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. And I'll stop right there. I like even verse five. He says why, he given the reason why, mm -hmm. that their faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, Amen. but in the power of God. We are to put our trust in the power of God Amen. and God, not in our own wisdom, not in our own fleshly prideful mind Amen. and not in no other man's wisdom either because it's foolishness to God. Amen. And this is Paul demonstrating this power of God and how it is released and activated by God, so to say, choosing the foolish things that confound the wise. Mm -hmm. See, the wise people, again, they, they have to use that type of stuff to make themselves sound good. But when we as little people, born again believers, are, are keeping ourselves crucified and have this utterance, so to say, the word of God and the logos activated with the Holy Spirit, bringing it back to our remembrance, so to say, and having this type of knowledge that's found in the scriptures. We're not saying the knowledge that's according to the world. The world has their own knowledge. We're saying the knowledge that's brought forth by the Holy Ghost that's found in the scripture through studying, through fasting and praying and meditating upon the scripture, so to say. This is how we increase the knowledge and this is how we as little people have the power of God activated in our life. And this was Paul was demonstrating. Amen. And I even like, um, according to verse six, this is where he says, remember, we speak to wisdom to them that are perfect, who have come to a full maturity. Yes. And he says also in verse 11, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. So these wise men, mm -hmm. all they can know is just what man, lust, pride, yep. that's all they know. Mm -hmm. He says in verse, yes, in verse 11, he says, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. This is why it's so important to be full of the spirit mm -hmm. because the spirit teaches us all things. Amen. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Okay. <laughs> we were just going to read verse 7 also. He says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. See, man can't know this. Only way for us to understand this mystery is by having the Holy Ghost. By having the Holy Ghost, this is what helps us have this wisdom of God because this is how God shows us and reveals his wisdom unto us. And I'll finish reading verse 7. Even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. This is so pretty good because, you know, the devil, remember in Ezekiel, was it 28 about mm -hmm. the devil was wiser than Daniel? Mm -hmm. But the devil's not wiser than God, is he? No, he's not. When you have the Holy Ghost, the devil does not have the upper hand on God. Amen. He may have the upper hand on man, but if you have the Holy Ghost and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're in the kingdom of God and you're in the presence of God and you live above the devil. And let me tell you one thing, what 1 Corinthians 2, 8 says. It says, which none of the princes of this, of this world knew. It says, for had they known it, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. So do you know what happened after Christ was crucified and resurrected on the third day? This is where the Holy Ghost, so to say, is all over the world now. It's not just, so to say, when Jesus was walking in Jerusalem or just walking here and just in a certain place. When Jesus resurrected from the dead, God has, so to say, sent his Holy Ghost all over the entire world. So now it's open to all mankind who repent and get in this covenant with Jesus can receive this gift. And it doesn't matter if you're a Jew. It doesn't matter if you're Greek. It doesn't matter if you're Chinese or whatever nationality you are. All have to go through Jesus Christ. And everybody who is in Jesus Christ has this gift called the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And again, it doesn't matter where you are. 
And if you're not in covenant with Jesus, it doesn't matter who you are, then you're not saved. Amen. You, you cannot have the wisdom that's of God because it's only by being in his kingdom and by being a born again believer and by being sprinkled with the royal blood of Jesus. Amen. There's only one sect and only one bloodline now, and that's the bloodline of Jesus Christ. And you could find that in Matthew 1, 1. And I'll stop. Go ahead. Amen. I even like verses before we go, 13, 14. Amen. He says, which things we also speak, not in words of which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto them. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Amen. This is where the dis uh, gifts of discernment comes mm -hmm. in, because Amen. they are spiritually discerned. And this is why you have carnal people calling us in saying, well, you just need to stay in one book, you know. And well, the Bible says he just compares spiritual things with spiritual things, line upon line, precept upon precept. Amen. So there's just not one book that you just stick with, but he's, so, he compares scripture with scripture. Amen. And um, one thing we'll talk about this calling of God. You know, as we've been called, you can find this all the way back in Genesis chapter one, the word called 7121. And it lets you know again who we are. Remember we told you this is only for the people that are in the kingdom of God. This is what makes you royal. This is what makes you famous. We're not famous in this world. We don't want to be lifted up. We don't want, so to say, to be rich with money and wealth and materialistic because that is the profile of Satan. We want to have the profile of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he came in as a humble person riding on an ass. He was lowly. He didn't come in with all this money and this wealth and materialism. He came in, so to say, as a humble person, and that's who we want to be like. But knowing who we are in Jesus Christ, let's look at that 7121. And again, it comes from Genesis chapter 1. You can find it in verse 5, I believe, under the word called. And this is where it talks about calling one by their surname. It also talks about being famous. And, you know, once you're in Jesus Christ, you become part of his royal blood, and you become famous automatically. You know, even in Revelations 1, 5, it talks about the blood of Jesus. And even in verse 6, he's made us kings and priests. So we're made kings and priests by being in his body, Amen. by being in covenant with Jesus. And this is so to say what makes you a royal person. We don't have to be people in this world that are great and lifted up. These are the ones that God is going to put down from their seats. These are the ones that God is going to humble eventually. Even if they don't repent of their sins, so to say, God has a way of humbling people. But we pray that maybe you, under the sound of our voice, can even humble yourselves. And you say, I heard what you talked about, and that seemed pretty good about them mysteries. And you talked about royalty. I want to be a part of it. Maybe you feel like you're a nobody. Maybe you could be a little elderly person or maybe a young person. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. If you make a covenant with God, and vow to serve him and repent of your sins and get on your knees and humble yourself and say, God, I will obey you. I do want to be a part of your family. I want to know your mysteries. I want to think different. I want to have a miracle mind. Get on your knees and ask for forgiveness and say, Lord, I accept you as my savior. I repent of my sins. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Ask God to fill you and say, God, I will keep your word and I will obey you. And you have to trust God that he will make a way for you to obey him. He will make it possible. And again, we pray that you did enjoy our program. Our time is up, and we're so sorry that it got away from us that quick. If you want to write us a letter, it's 518 Pleasant Valley, Dayton, Ohio, 45404. Or you can email us at Pastor Inman, all one word, Pastor Inman, at att.net. Thank you again, and we're looking forward to hearing from you through letter or email. God bless.